Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back. We got some more bite-sized business advice for you today, and it's going to be a fun conversation, I think. We're talking about brand differentiation, but not the normal way, I don't think. We're going to dive in to really unpack what we're talking about here. It's a different sort of marketing conversation. I have a very special guest with us today, Barry LaBeouf. So before we go any further, Barry, welcome to the show. Brandon, I'm a big fan. I thank you for uh, allowing me to join you today. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. And uh, I say, let's just let's just go for it. Let's do it. I love meeting fans, Barry. I will sign an autograph after the recording. But for now, let's <laughs> let's focus on you. <laughs> I okay. appreciate you being here. So we're talking about marketing, talking about brand differentiation. We were talking a little bit before the recording. And there's this there's human element to it that we also want to focus on today. So can you explain what, what's your take on brand differentiation? I appreciate you asking that. You know, differentiation is the one word I focus on in my life, in my career. So, I mean, it's 15 letters, it's six syllables, it's a mouthful. Sometimes I'm on podcasts and they can't even pronounce the word. And I go, oh my gosh. But here's what's fascinating about differentiation. And that is, it's not just about your brand or your product. It's about humans. And that's where it gets so exciting. Differentiating your brand, whether you're a small company, whether you're a multi-billion dollar company, is very, very critical because otherwise you become a commodity. And the world wants you as a brand to become a commodity. And the world wants the employee, the person who works somewhere, to be disillusioned. They want they want you to feel like, ah, you're nothing. You're just a cog in the wheel. And what's so beautiful is what my company gets to do, and I think it's it's an honor to do this, is we discover, we don't try to create, we discover what makes a brand and its products unique. And we have a process for that. Once we do it, Brandon, this is where it gets so incredibly exciting. We make sure that we name that differentiation and we, sh we share it and celebrate it. And I mean celebrate it with the most important people in the world. And that's not your customer. That's your employee. It's the person who builds or services your product. Could be the distribution network that sells your product. We celebrate it with the most important people because they need to understand what they're doing actually has significance. You know, I'm not just making another widget. There's a purpose for this. And there's a reason we do it this way. And I actually play a meaningful role. So differentiation, the way we, we focus on it at our company is we discover what makes a brand or product distinct. We then articulate it so that you can repeat it. And then we began the celebration process with the most important people. And then, yes, we'll launch it out to the world. That's, that's so awesome. And I've, I've already decided we don't have enough time in this conversation to ask all the questions that I want to ask because this is such an important topic and one that could be unpacked for like three hours. So let's start here because I actually, I come from a business and an industry that is heavily commoditized. And my sole focus in running that business prior to me selling it was I had to find a way for this to not be a commodity because everybody lose, loses when you're a commodity. The employees lose, the owner loses, the, the clients lose. So that was my focus for a number of years. And we, we happened to find a way to do that. And we were able to charge more than our competitors. But we didn't even have people bringing us quotes and prices from other people at that point, because it was just it was known that we were not selling the same thing, even though really we were. So I want to I'm curious to find your your process behind this, because so many people need to hear this conversation. And it's my passion to get it to the world for people like you to get your message to the world. So where do we start when you walk into a company and they're like, nope, sorry, I'm selling real estate. I'm selling insurance. I'm selling CPA services. Like it is what it is. How do you start unpacking what they're really selling? 
Well, you know, one thing, it, it really occurred to me as you were talking there that when you think about people who have a tattoo, let's say a Harley Davidson tattoo or a tattoo that says the Marines, I mean, that's something, right? Nobody has the tattoo of a commodity on them. Nobody has a commodity as a tattoo. And we do not want that. Whether that tattoo is on their body or it's in their heart, we want them to feel like what they're doing and what they represent is actually valuable. So what we do, our process, we have five steps and two of them are extremely rare. Nobody does one of them. Nobody does. But in a nutshell, we will meet with the company, the brand leaders, the individuals who founded the company, if they're still around, employees, customers, and we're going to listen. We listen for certain words. We try to find what is the magic in what that company does. And one thing we do, and this is important for your audience, we don't just ask, okay, what do they need to do differently? I mean, we'll ask that. But we ask a better question than that, which is, what should they never change? What are they doing that you as an employee, you as a customer, do not want them to change? Because entrepreneurs, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm willing to change it all. And it's like, okay, but stop. Sometimes you're doing something great. So we listen to them. That's step one. Step two, nobody does. And if anybody out there does, please get a hold of me. Let's have a talk about it. I, I can't wait to hear what, the, what the, the conversation would be. The second step is we call a technical immersion. And that's whether or not you're at a manufacturing plant or your service facility. doesn't matter. We go inside the company itself, the plant, the physical facility, whatever it is. And we learn what is unique. We identify, we discover, is it a unique process? Is it a unique uh, technology? Is it a metallurgy? What is it that is unique that you're doing? What are the ingredients in your product or the features that you pay a little extra money for that you think really make a difference? Well, hold on a minute. That may be a differentiation. You're paying extra money. You're going through extra steps. After that, we then come back after we've learned all about the product and the service and what's inside it, as well as what's inside the hearts of the people involved with it. We come up and we say, okay, here's what we found. These are the potential differentiators. The client and our team will then decide on three to five of them as a rule. Then we go to what's normal for most agency. We, we may end up uh, producing logos or a new website or photography. Okay. After we finish that, then we get to the very rare step that very few companies do, and that is the internal launch. We launch it internally to every single individual involved so they understand what this is about. You don't want to launch a new product or relaunch your brand and have the people who are building it or making it go, yeah, I don't know what it is. Nobody told me about it. Yeah, I heard we have a new name for that product. You don't want that. You want the opposite. You want someone to say, hey, Brandon, how come you guys did such and such? And let's say Brandon's a guy working on the line at a factory and he goes, oh, let me tell you about it. Here's what's really cool. Nobody does this. This is amazing. And you go, wow. So what we do is we go through those five steps. After we internally launch it, we launch it to the world. And that's how we do it. Big thing on the technical immersion for everybody listening is you have to understand you can be so close to your product or your service or your technology that you don't see what makes it unique. So either bring someone in who can help you with that or somehow start to view it from a different angle. It's so critical to identify those very, very few, but incredibly important things that make you distinct. Yeah, that that step is super important too because you're right. You can't you can't see the forest through the trees, as the saying goes, and that's why people like you and me are are employed and have businesses because we are the outside set of eyes. Mm -hmm. And what I always like to say is uh, on that same line, ask we ask the stupid questions, the stuff where it's like so obvious to everybody in the company. It's like, can you just tell me why you do that one more time? Because mm -hmm. I don't think I understood. And then the the revelations start to come about like, you know what? We probably could do it a faster way. Yeah, maybe we could. Let's try some things. Um, yeah, Brandon, what you're saying, what you're saying, I'm going to tell you, because your business is a great business. That's exactly what you bring to your customers, because you're that 
that fresh set of eyes that says, okay, wait a minute, this is what I'm seeing. And then you're asking the questions because you care. And many times I know with your business, you actually inspire your clients because they go, oh my gosh, that's an opportunity for us. But it's been right in front of them all along. Yeah, no, it's a beautiful thing to have that second set of eyes, the outside set of eyes, if you will. Um, but I want to talk about step four because you're, yeah, I, I don't know a lot of people who do that step very well. And I was on a call last week, not a client call, just with a, uh, at insurance and of all things. And I asked a question and they were like, wait, where did you hear about that? It was on our website. I haven't heard anything about this, this product yet. And it's, it happens all the time in big companies, small companies. I want to understand why we overlook that step first and foremost, and then also the benefits of having your employees and your team tied in to the launch of this product. Like, how does that, what does that look like for your, the companies you consult with versus the people who get it wrong? Like I just described. Well, I want to give credit to today's CEOs and COOs and CFOs because today's C-suite gets it. They actually value the employee because I think in part, it's so hard to hold on to employees. You know, it's yeah. tough. But when I started this process over 20 years ago, your question is right on target. The response from many of the leaders was, why am I going to waste my time shutting down the facility for an hour, two hours, and celebrating something? I want them to keep their heads down, take their five bucks an hour, and get that project done. And that was a tough fight for our company. I mean, we had clients who said, we will absolutely not do that. Today, we have to think about it. There's the pressure to be commoditized if you're a brand or a product. There is also the pressure for the worker to feel like they're working for an evil empire or they're working for an incompetent uh, boss or a combination of both, evil and incompetent, which is a very interesting concept. Good combo. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and so we have to realize there are all those pressures. And one thing that solves this is engaging the humans who are involved in what you're doing. But you have to believe you're doing something unique. So in all candor, if a client says, we do nothing unique, we're not special, my company either finds something they're doing that they're, that they're just not counting on or looking at very closely, or we say, well, we cannot help you because this is, this is not possible. But we'll usually find distinctiveness and, and all. And, and I'll say one more thing. Many, many leaders of companies are beating themselves up every day because, you know, we're not getting the market share. We're not that special. And, you know, I think we're overpriced and, you know, we, we could do better and our quality is a little low and they get so beaten up. But again, being a fresh set of eyes like we are, we're telling them now, wait a minute, I know you're beating yourself up, but your competitors are in the same position. They're having the same problems. So let's stop beating ourselves up and let's start looking at what we're doing that's unique and valuable. And that's, that's what we focus on. It's inherently very, very positive and inspiring to do that. Yeah. And I love that word inspiring. So this is kind of what we run into in this scenario is because we'll work with a number of different leaders and CEOs, the ones who just like you just described, they're very hard on themselves, their companies, they want they always want to be better. And I think that's a beautiful quality in entrepreneurs in general, the, that we strive to be better. That's fantastic. The downside of that is that it could demoralize your team. You, your employees aren't always there to be better. They just want to feel like they're contributing to something. So in our business architecture, the word, the, the name of the show, Harmonious, the I stands for inspire, which is what people traditionally would call leadership. We just believe leaders should inspire, not just lead. How do you, when you're going in and working, you're finding these unique, uh, the differentiators in the companies, do you ever kind of push the leader aside and go right to the team and kind of build them up and say, no, this is what it is. This is what sets you apart, sets your company apart. And does that tend to pull the leader along with them? Or do you focus always top down and make sure the leader inspires first? No, we work with the entire team because sometimes the leader might be a numbers person he is brought in to go fix certain things within that company. Many of the times the leaders 
are taking on so much of the stress that they don't realize they're also emitting a lot of that stress, that people are feeling it from them. A uh, very quick uh, story. I worked with a very, very well-known automotive manufacturer. Their president called me up and he said, I need your genius. We're, we're going to launch a new product. Morale is terrible. Our old product is horrible. I need you here now. I met with the leader. There was a particular car that they were going to discontinue it and they were going to have a brand new model of it coming out. The internal organization at this very well-known manufacturer was very depressed. They were down. It was terrible. And I said to the leader, I said, you know, this, this product that you want to replace that you're discontinuing, he said, yeah, it's ugly. Nobody buys it. It's a terrible product. I said, okay, do you know what the number one product in that segment is? And it has been number one for the last 10 years. He said, no, I don't know. What, what competitor is it? I said, you don't have a competitor that's number one. You have been the number one product in your segment for almost 20 years. And he said, I didn't realize that. And I said, you've been beating yourself up and not realizing you have the number one product in the segment. Now it's got some flaws. But I said, think about the feelings. And Brandon, think about this. His people went into work every day producing the number one product in its segment, and they felt like crap. They felt terrible. They felt like losers. And it's like, we got to turn this around and say, hold on a minute. We're going to come out with a new version of this. But this is the king of the segment. This is the leader and you know what? We have made that the leader over these years. So we'll take this new product, which we believe will be better, and we'll do great. So we have to realize that many times that leader is taking this stuff on. And I try to help leaders like that. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a leader whisperer, but I would say that I will really try to inspire leaders to understand that, hey, you're killing yourself, you're beating yourself up, but you're doing a lot of good things. And let's make sure your people understand that they're doing some really good things. Yeah. Beat yourself up in private, but don't, don't take it out on your team, right? right. <laughs> if you can build them up, they can, they can really carry the whole organization in most cases. So that is, that's a powerful illustration. I'd love to get the inside scoop on what that company was. We won't put that on the air here because um, no. you probably have NDAs everywhere you look in your house from all the companies you've consulted with. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But Barry, no, this has been an awesome conversation. I put your website on the screen here. Uh, you are you are an author. You have a book. Tell us a little bit about what we can find on your website for the listener. My book is called The Power of Differentiation. And just like we've been speaking here, its subtitle is Win Hearts minds and market share and that's the order that we look at it win hearts minds and market share so the book is featured on the site you can uh ask for information on it it's soon to be released depending on when this podcast is out it may be out on amazon by that time anyway the the thing is go to the site there's some free documents you can download and if you want to start a conversation with me that's great it can be fun it doesn't have to be transactional I'm happy to connect with people. That's so awesome. I appreciate that. Now, Barry, what I like to do is this question or this, this podcast is really focused on questions. And our, our philosophy at What If is you ask powerful questions, you get powerful answers. If you can see me, for those of you watching, you can see me too. There's a giant upside down question mark that is obnoxiously lit up behind my head. I love questions. So Barry, the question for you is to give me a question. Based on this whole interview, we went a number of different ways. What is the one question a listener can take away and think about for the rest of their day to get themselves and their business moving in the right direction or take a giant leap forward from just this little 20-minute episode? All right. So here's the question I want the listeners to ask themselves. If it was three years from today and I'm sitting right here and I felt like my company and my team made phenomenal strides that I'm so proud of. What has happened in those three years? So think about it again. It's three years from today. You're looking back. What have we done that has made this so successful that I'm so proud of? And some of it could be statistical. Some of it could be cultural. Some of it could be new products, new clients. What has happened that you now, three years from today, are so proud of yourself and your team? That's an amazing question. 
Barry, thank you for that. Thank you for this whole interview. This is fantastic. Brandon, you're fantastic yourself. You and team are doing great work out there. Congratulations. I appreciate it. For those of you watching, listening, wherever you are, make sure you subscribe. We want to make sure to keep bringing this daily nonsense of Harmonious at Lunch to you so we can disrupt the way you think about your business and help you get outside that box. Keep moving your business forward. We want you to win as bad as you want to win. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch.